For years, Epic has been releasing new features and mechanics every season, which drastically change how the game is played for both competitive and casual players. However, this season, things are a little bit different. We've actually got a little bit of time to test out everything before the next season of Arena begins. And depending on the opinions of the community, the competitive loot pool could even get changed. What's up, Fortnite fam? I'm Cody, and today we're going to be going through four things that should change in the preseason of Fortnite Season 6. So hit that sub button, and let's get into it. But hey, before any of that, make sure you check out our ongoing Pro Guides Pro membership giveaway. Follow the link down in the description to be in a chance of winning a year subscription to the Pro Guides site, where you can enjoy master courses by some of the biggest pros like Clicks. You'll also have a chance of winning four VOD reviews or even an exclusive Pro Guide shirt. With the release of Fortnite Season 6, a whole bunch of new weapons have been added to the loot pool, ranging from a load of new primal weapons to a bunch of new makeshift and mechanical weapons. While this may be good for those of us who want a fresh and new experience in Fortnite, the downside is that adding all of these new weapons in one go is a balancing nightmare. And there's always gonna be an unavoidable problem with some guns being incredibly overpowered while others are pathetically underpowered. If you need an example, let's talk about the brand new gray makeshift shotgun. To be completely blunt and honest with you, the gray makeshift shotgun simply isn't a good weapon, plain and simple. Now to be honest, all makeshift weapons are actually pretty awful. Sure, they're decent for a drop spot starting weapon, and I do get that the point of these things is to try and upgrade your weapon using mechanical parts and bones as the game progresses. But there is a problem. If you land literally anywhere that is even just a teeny tiny bit contested, then it's going to be really hard to find those crafting pieces before any other player. The vehicles are going to be swarmed within an instant, and luck is the single determining factor on whether you're going to find bones or not because animals spawn randomly around the map. Epic has a couple of choices on what they could do to try and fix this balancing issue before the preseason comes to a close. They should either make finding mechanical parts and bones easier and more reliable in competitive games by increasing the vehicle and animal spawn rates and locations, or they should buff the makeshift weapons so they're actually usable against mechanical or primal weapons. As it stands at the moment, 99% of the time, if an opponent manages to score a mechanical or primal weapon before you do, then they're going to have a massive advantage over you that might just determine the fight there and then, no matter how good you are. I mean, the gray makeshift shotgun pullout time is just terrible. What if you get caught in a box fight where that is your only option? The makeshift weapons aren't the only potentially bad thing about this season's balance. Sure, the community absolutely loves the pump shotgun, especially in its epic and legendary forms. But some pros still think that the Season 5 shotgun meta, which was mainly based around charges, tacks, and levers, was much more balanced. Even Clicks, one of the top NA Fortnite pros, says that the pump shotgun is an absolutely broken weapon that has no place in Fortnite competitive. And we can kind of see his point. Should there really be a weapon in the game that allows you to one-tap any player who's at max health if you get a headshot? It means something when one of the best players in the world believes that a weapon is broken, and we honestly think he might have a point. For competitive, Epic should probably consider keeping things simple. There is a whole load of RNG and luck involved in the game at the moment. <laughs> and that just won't fly in a competitive environment in the long term. If the RNG is getting you down and you want to elevate your play above it all, head over to ProGuides.com where our master courses by pros like Clicks will be waiting to level up your game fast. So fast, bro. Speedy. Around two years ago, Epic made a pretty controversial decision. They chose to permanently disable anyone from being able to use a stretched resolution while playing Fortnite. They did this because it gave an unfair advantage against console players, who were completely unable to customize their resolutions, and also because it looked less pleasing to viewers at home who were watching the pros play the game. 
but why did players even bother to switch to an alternative resolution if it had such a negative impact on the aesthetics of their streams? Well, that's because changing to a custom resolution and allowing a stretched effect to occur actually granted them a better vertical field of view which meant that they could see more things on their screen. Things that you usually wouldn't be able to see at all. There were a ton of streamers at the time who were using stretched resolutions before it was eventually taken off the menu. Even major streamers like Tfue and Ninja who were preparing for the original World Cup. Ever since Epic took stretched resolution away, Pro players and streamers alike have been asking for a FOV slider so they can see more things on their screen at once. It's not just the pros either. Normal players who get motion sickness while playing have been begging Epic for the addition for a while. And right now, during the preseason stage of the game, it feels like it would be the perfect time to finally implement it into the game to see what the pro players' opinions about it are and how it could actually be improved. It would be the perfect alternative to stretched resolution since it would be implementable both on the new current gen consoles and PC devices and wouldn't take away from the visuals of the game. A ton of competitive games have FOV sliders, so we don't see why Fortnite should be any different. For today's question of the day, we want to ask you what you think should be changed during the preseason. Are you against the RNG? Should crafting only be in pubs? Let us know down below. We will be reading every single one. This is your time to shine, Keyboard Warrior. Go at it. As of Chapter 2, Season 6, Fortnite's arena mode has been pretty much exactly the same as it was when it first launched. The only reward that you get for grinding up the champions division in arena is the ability to play in top tier tournaments. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Once you reach the heights of the champions division, there's absolutely nothing past that milestone to motivate or incentivize players to keep grinding. There's no rewards if you get to something like 50k, 100k, or more arena points, and some players think it's about time for that to change. Nothing too crazy even needs to happen. Maybe we could just be treated to something like an online leaderboard that shows players total hype points, which you can change from daily and weekly to monthly hype totals, or something like that. Could be an idea. Alternately, there could be simple cosmetics added to the game to show your progress through Arena depending on the rank that you place at the end of the game. If games like League of Legends and Overwatch can have ranked banner rewards, then why not Fortnite? All in all, there are pretty simple changes that could have a major impact on the active player count for Arena. Not everyone wants to enter the highest stakes tournaments in the game, so giving people something else to grind for could end up being pretty fun. Okay, so our fourth and final change that we're going to be talking about today, we're kind of going back to the subject of balance because we thought of this specific season six change needed a section all on its own. In the new update, Epic decided to remove first shot accuracy for a lot of the weapons in the game. The only weapons that now have first shot accuracy are mechanical variants. Oh, and they vaulted every single sniper from the game in season six. Let's tackle the first shot accuracy first. Removing first shot accuracy from makeshift and primal weapons was pretty uncalled for. The mechanic allows skilled players to pick off an enemy's health from a long distance, using precise aiming skill so they can stay ahead of the damage threshold for things like the late game storm surge. Now, unless you have a regular AR, players are going to be limited to only close range combat. Not only does this mean that Storm Surge is probably going to kill a whole lot more people, but getting damage on players will become a thing of the past and spraying through boxes to deal damage will almost definitely become the dominant meta once again. As a suggestion, they should definitely consider bringing back first shot accuracy on all ARs at the very least. And if they bring back snipers, they should instead nerf them so you can't be eliminated across the map when you're at max shield and health because, okay, we can all admit that is both annoying and unfair. All right, Fortnite fam, do you agree with the new changes we suggested? Let us know your thoughts in the comments and also remember to answer our question of the day. 
If you enjoyed the video, then leave a like and sub to the channel. We are so close to 1 million subs, and once we hit it, we're releasing the story of Keith Allen. He's been working super hard on this video, so let's make sure that we get there quick. That's it for the video, though. So until next time, I'm out of here. Good luck grinding. I'll catch you on the next one. What's up, baby? Hey. Oh, dude, throw. What are you doing? Oh. Oh. Oh, but there's... Ah! <laughs>